yesterday there was a, a function on the campus here at the historic University of Fort Hare. Mm -hmm. So it was the, uh, uh, let me see, here we go. It was the, uh, the it's called Sabukwe Remember Africa, and it's a, it's a 90th birthday, or I like to say life day, um, birthday commemorative project. In other words, this is the year of the um, um, 90s, so Robert Sabukwe would have been, I guess, 90 years old, so all throughout the year they're traveling, like a traveling exhibit, you know? So they had to take an art exhibit. They well, okay, you might want to hold on to that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, so 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 so, so uh, since that was the last day yesterday of the exhibit, because it was up for like a week or two or whatever it is, they had a, a lecture, and uh, you know, people were there. Anyway, I was thinking, because when I read, you know, Brother Mangalese or Robert Sipuque, what I realized is like, well, to cut your chase, let me just say it like this. For here in South Africa, uh, you know, you have Madiba, you know, you have Mandela, you know. The Mandela is like your Martin Luther King, you know, conciliatory, trying to get people, whatever it is, you know, like that. But see, Brother Mangaliso, he's like Malcolm X. So, you know, you see, you have Sipukwe, Malcolm X, Madiba, you know, Mandela, Martin Luther King. And that was a good combination. Only problem is you had the apartheid government here, so they were, <laughs> they were doing some stuff. Anyway, so that's the way I look at it. But I'm thinking something else, too, too about that whole time period. Uh, around, about, uh, around about that time period, I guess, uh, a little bit before that, you know, there was a, a writer that I particularly liked, uh, Richard Wright. And he was, uh, he was living in Paris. At the time, he was expatriate. He had left the states and stuff like that. And but he would know what's going on in the states. And he would write stuff. And but people accused him of saying like, "Well, you aren't here." You know, well, it's a valid criticism. You know, but the point really is, hey, but you know, he's a writer. He can, you know, well, like anyway, he wasn't there. I'm in the same situation. I mean, like <laughs> Richard Wright, anything like that. I meant that, you know, I'm what's called an expat. I'm not in the states. You know, I'm here in South Africa. So stuff happens, you know, I can only see what's happening in the newspapers and, you know, on the, you know, on the internet and stuff like that. But, you know, I still have concerns because, you know, there's a lot of people there. What I call the, the, the Middle Passage Clan, because I'm from the Middle Passage Clan. That's what I started. You know. So I'm looking, I'm saying, but, you know, stuff is happening. You know, mostly there's this whole, they call it police brutality. I call it just a modern Ku Klux Klan. You know, think of, think of apartheid, you know, of, forces you know, doing their thing, mm -hmm. you know. So the police forces has now morphed into like an overground, you know, without the sheets, without the hoods, Ku Klux Klan. And you know, they've been killing black people all over the place. I won't even go, in fact, they kill everybody. If you, if you ain't, they just kill everybody. They, they just did some Mexican in, in Northern California, you know. But what's more important than that, my man, well, I, if I was, if I was Denzel Washington, I'd be saying my man, but you know, one of my men, uh, Samuel L. Jackson. So sort of miffed about what's going on. Now I particularly like Sam Jackson because you know, he, first of all, let me just say this straight up front. He got rooked out of what's called the Oscar when they did when when they did when John Travolta got all the acclaim for that thing that Quentin Tarantino did the Pulp Fiction thing because he was much better. But I won't get into that. But see, see, Samuel L. Jackson did a much better role in a thing called Black Snake Moon. Black Snake Moon about this. I think the director's Craig Brewster or Brew or something. Well, Brewster, I think he's from Memphis, Tennessee. He was a southern kind of guy. In fact, he got famous because he did a thing called Hustle and Flow. You know. Anyway, this role that Samuel Jackson did in my, in in, uh, in, uh, in this film, which is one of my favorite films, was amazing. He's singing and he's tuning the blues. There was one scene. There's one scene that particularly I loved when he's getting ready to to, to one of the final acts. You know, to to sing at this uh, uh, what do we call dive joint. You know, this 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 this, uh, this bar. He takes this. Uh, it's so authentic. He takes this two things of what's called pomade grease, and grease, and two brushes, and he does his hair back, and he just brush like that, getting ready. to Takes his guitar. It's just magnificent. If look, if you ever look, I have I bought the DVD. Come over to the house, man. I'll show it to you one time. Take two hours, man. It's a, a wonderful movie. It's an amazing movie. Samuel Del Jackson just, just kills it. You know, he usually got a whole bunch of awards for that one, but <laughs> the themes gonna go off, you know. Anyway, 
So Samuel said, because they had all these challenges, these uh, internet challenges, the ice bucket challenge, and all the rest of this stuff, so he got pissed off. No, excuse my language. I mean, he got miffed because uh, of, uh, uh, let's, let's, let's just say, uh, because they have all these challenges, now look, now we have something else. And you know, he's, he's telling all his creative artists, the friends, well, they gotta step up and do something, you know? So he made up this, made up, well, he, he wrote this song. Well, he's, he challenged this song. And, and uh, as you can see, I got my spook right there, but you see, I got my hat here. Now, if you know the hat, I got my little button here. You see the little button on the hat? And what it says is from Sphere, and it's like, uh, I got it from some music, uh, drama, and uh, it's from Spear, the, the wine estate there in, in Cape Town. I got it from uh, Onel Nyanga and then Shushu and Shushu's wife because they did this project and they invited me to, to you know to, to participate to, to facilitate a workshop in audio drama. So I got some musical chops. Now, admittedly, my, I'm not really a singer enough like that, but hey, this is important. So. Let me do what Samuel L. Jackson's called the We Ain't Gonna Stop Till People Are Free song. Oh, your musical compliment. Wait a second. Get my things that I got from India, you know. That's what here. Here's the song. I can hear my neighbor crying. I can't breathe. Now I'm in the struggle. Calling out the violence of the racist police. We ain't gonna stop till people are free. We ain't gonna stop till people are free. That's it. That's the we ain't the we ain't gonna stop till people are free song. So that's my little contribution. All artists, poets, and everything. Then, no matter if you can sing or not, you should. Record that and put that up on your, you know, on your distribution system, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the way I feel. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with Sam. I'm with Samuel Jackson on that, you know. And I think a whole bunch of artists should be with Samuel Jackson on that. Don't shuck your responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to do them sexy songs? We'll do some songs that make some sense, that make some, you know, in people's lives. But that's just my opinion, because, you know, just opinion, opinion from the, Arch director emeritus, that, that would be me, T, from the Pattinson's taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. Mm -hmm.